Okay, so I'm Kimberly Collins, and I want to talk to you today about getting started with hardware and also with Python. I'm not a Python developer, I'm a .NET developer. Just getting started with uh, Python because I want to get started with hardware. So uh, I don't know how many of you are, uh, consider yourselves, you know, hardware developers as opposed to software developers. Um, but I want to tell you a little bit about how to get started if you haven't. Uh, I would really recommend getting started with the Raspberry Pi. If you're not familiar with that, th that's what this is. It's a single board computer. It only costs $35, but that gets you just this. So if you want to use it as a computer, obviously you're going to need more than this to set it up. But you can use it as a desktop computer. You're probably not going to be replacing your development machine with this, but um, it is really good for kids, for example, to set up. You can get on the internet. They can play Minecraft, all that. So it's a very familiar environment. There's an operating system. There are programs. Um, and so that's why I like it to just get started, as opposed to an Arduino or a microcontroller where you um, don't have this familiar operating system environment. What's cool about the Raspberry Pi is these GPIO pins, general purpose input and output, means that you can connect these to physical devices in the real world. And so you're running your code and you're used to, as a software developer, doing things on the computer, but now we can actually uh, connect to lights and buttons and motors and things like that. And also what's nice about the Pi is the small size. You can put it inside of a mirror or a clock and have a, an embedded device, attach it to your garage door opener. Um, so these are some examples of what you can do with a Pi and, and why I really uh, encourage getting started with this if you haven't gone into hardware yet. So like I said, you can set it up and use it as a desktop computer. I have done that before. It's not super powerful because again, it's just this, it's just $35, so don't expect a lot from it. Um, but it can do a lot of cool stuff. Um, can, to connect from your computer, you have a couple of options. One is SSH, which is command line access. Uh, the other is VNC, which is remoting in. Um, I use a program called Type VNC Viewer, and I'll come back to this, but I'm remoted into this Raspberry Pi right here. This is the Pi 2, and this is the Pi 3 that I'm running for my demos. Uh, so if you are writing Python, a few IDE options that you have, uh, the Raspberry Pi operating system comes with idle, so you can use that for Python 2 or Python 3. Uh, the new Pixel operating system on the Raspberry Pi comes with an IDE called Thonny. Uh, I did ha have issues because I wanted to use a Python 2 library and it only supports Python 3. Um, coming from a .NET development, development background, I'm comfortable with Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code, so I was happy to be able to run Visual Studio Code on my Raspberry Pi. Um, I read a blog post saying you can just pull down the source code from GitHub and compile it and it'll work great. For me, it didn't. All I got was errors. So I found someone else who had created an unofficial, unsupported community build of Visual Studio Code and that worked great. I can't show it to you because it doesn't come up through the VNC. If you want to look at it later, I can show you, but it's, it's Visual Studio Code on the Raspberry Pi. So whenever you're getting started in the hardware world, the first thing you are ever going to do is the Hello World app, which is a flashing LED. That's like pretty much what we, we always do as our first uh, project. So I have here uh, in Thawney, that's what, uh, I have my code in right here. I can go through the code, but I mean, it, it's pretty straightforward. Nothing like too exciting here. And I, that's kind of my point is like, this uh, code is very simple, very straightforward. I just um, configured the pin number, uh, set the mode, um, set the pin as an out. And then you can see here, um, it flashed a few times. I might need to run it again so you can uh, see how exciting this is. But whenever you, you, your very first project, you uh, run and see this LED coming on and off, like that's kind of an exciting moment. Um, so that's, uh, that's your hello world. So just a little bit more information if you're interested in the hardware side. It's very simple. I have the um, blue LED, a resistor, two jumper wires connected to the breadboard, so I don't have to do any soldering uh, for my prototyping and tinkering. And what I'm using to connect the breadboard to the Raspberry Pi is called a cobbler. So kind of a food theme here, Raspberry Pi, cobbler, breadboard. Um, and so that is as simple as it gets for your very first Hello World project. You can definitely do this. There are just a few pieces of electronics here, a few lines of code, and you are started in the hardware world. What I wanted to do next was the LED strip. I think that those uh, look really cool, and so I wanted to learn how to um, write code for them. And that's how I got started in Python in the first place, was I got this LED strip from Adafruit. It's called the Dot Star, and um, the Adafruit has a Python library that you can use to control it. I got the cheapest one they had, which is 30, uh, as far as being an individually addressable RGB. This is the cheapest, a meter, 30 lights. You can get longer and more dense lights, but uh, this is the one I got. I just have three jumper wires, one for data, one for clock, and one for ground. And so you see that here on my breadboard. 
Um, right now I have both demos going on my breadboard so I didn't have to switch them out, but this is uh, all you have to do as far as the uh, electronic side hook up to your Raspberry Pi. You could take the jumper wires directly to the Pi. What's nice is these labels because when you're using the Pi itself, there are no labels. It's you constantly have to look up and count. Okay, it's the 10th pin. And uh, I've made mistakes before not getting the right pin. So it's nice to have the, these labels on the cobbler. So I'm going to show you a couple of demos. Uh, one is the rainbow. I feel like that's sort of the, the standard thing to do first with an LED strip. And uh, so I can't do that in Thawney. I have to switch back to something like Idle. Um, and I'm having trouble controlling my VNC connection. So I might need to close it and try again. This happened earlier. Okay, so here is the code. The first few lines, these lines, came from Adafruit's GitHub. Uh, I'm importing their .star library, Python 2, unfortunately. I tell it how many pixels I have and my pin numbers. I do an initialization on the strip. I'm saying the brightness is very low um, because it kind of hurts your eyes when you're looking at this. The brightness gets much higher. Uh, so this is set to like 4%. And then I can write whatever code I want to, whatever logic I want to use to set the, the pixel color. I'm just passing into this method um, which pixel, starting from 0 to um, my last one is 29, and then the color that I want. And so I'm using whatever code I want to use to um, show different um, designs and patterns. So this is my rainbow starting at red and going through to the end, back to red. Um, not super exciting, but it's pretty. And again, I can get, make this much brighter, but it kind of hurts your eyes. Um, so the next thing I wanted to do was create a moving rainbow. Obviously, that's the next step. You'll see these lines of code are identical. And then I have different logic. I'm just creating a list of colors and then iterating through the colors. Um, Nothing super exciting about the Python code. Um, it's very simple to get started. And now you see my moving rainbow. So just nice, you know, ambient colors, but not very practical. And so the next thing I wanted to do, if you are not familiar with the Pomodoro technique, I really like to use this to focus on work. So you'll work for 25 minutes, take a five minute break, repeat, and then take a longer break. So this is kind of a mock-up of how I wanted to show this on the LED strip. We'll start with blue, and then five minutes later, the green, the green will progress. This is every five minutes, what you're seeing. And then black, no light, indicates it's time for a break. So the first pixel, pixel zero, is minute zero, which is now. And then e each pixel is one minute into the future, so you can kind of see how um, your schedule is coming towards you. You can see whether it's a short break coming up or a long break. And um, so I'll show you a demo of that, maybe. It's a switching back and forth that does not work very well. So I might have to be in CN again for some reason. But hopefully I can show this. It's a very slow connection. It might not work, so you might not get to see this. So there we go. It's flashing to indicate that it's time to start working. And then um, here is the first pixel and then our plan for the future. I've got it sped up so you can see how it would look at uh, 10 times speed. Uh, so I'm going to to-do change that back afterwards. And it's kind of cool to have this because when I'm working, and it's kind of an upside and a downside. People say, oh, cool, what's that? I say, well, it's my Pomodoro timer. Like, I'm in the middle of Pomodoro right now. But they kind of get it, like, oh, okay, you're working right now. So that's what I really like about this. Um, so that's the Pomodoro technique. If you're interested in learning more in Techlahoma Slack, we have a DIY electronics channel. So if you're just getting started or you're an expert, you can go there, share pictures of your projects, ask questions. Um, we have an open source hardware meetup. I'm the organizer of the group. I just started because I was started going because I was interested in learning, and then next thing you know, I'm leading the meetup. Uh, we meet the second Saturday of every month, and so that's this Saturday. If you're interested at all, please come. We'll be in, in this room here at Starspace. And then She Codes OKC, if you know of any women who might be interested in getting started, um, they meet once a month, and this month the topic happens to be Raspberry Pi. So um, check those out on Meetup. The resources I used, I have a link here to the Visual Studio Code build because uh, I did have some trouble getting that going, a link to the dot star on Adafruit, and then the GitHub repo that I cloned to put all my code in. So that's all I've got.